the Dynam Tiger Moth, the 1200 millimeter plane. Biplane, really cool looking. Let's take a let's take a tour of this thing. And let you guys see it for all its uh, glory. If you want to win a jet like this, all you have to do is subscribe. Click the like button and leave a comment. And then uh, ring the bell so you don't miss my next video. At a thousand subscribers, we gave this jet away. At five thousand, we're going to give another one. I don't know what it is yet. We'll see when that time comes. So hey, subscribe guys. Happy flying. Hey YouTube, it's Sean and Brutus. Well, just a Sean now. Griffin RC Planes. I hope everybody had a good weekend. I almost got to go fly today on Sunday. I opened up the patio door around like maybe 1 o'clock and it was sunny skies and nearly 60 degrees and I didn't feel a bit of wind. And I just got into immediate, you know, fly mode. I'm thinking about batteries and what I'm going to grab and this and that. And then I went on the patio again and it was like 20 mile an hour wind. So it, uh, it psyched me out. But uh, a request by you guys, people have been asking, what is this yellow cow for that's sitting on the shelf behind me? Oh, this guy right here. And it's for a Dynam Tiger Moth. So I figured I'd show it to you and then tell you the story about uh, you know when I got it and, and all that good stuff. And we'll go ahead and put the cow on it. So sit tight. Let me go grab it. Gonna have to knock the dust and the cobwebs off this guy. Alright, the Dynam Tiger Moth. This was my third plane. I went from the Apprentice, was my first, and after getting the hang of it and really flying the, you know, the flying the plane to, you know, the most that it can, the battery was only lasting, you know, five and six, maybe eight minutes. And the price of LiPo batteries, you know, four years ago was pretty dang expensive. So I said to myself, you know, oh, there's got to be a better way. So that's when I wanted to get uh, into glow planes. So my second plane was a, a SIG 4 Star 54. And I bought it used off of a Facebook Marketplace. It was a, a PNP. And it had everything but the receiver. And, <clears throat> and it had a four-stroke uh, Sato, Sato 65 uh, motor on it. And I already had all the all the stuff to take care of and start glow motors because of uh, my RC glow powered cars. So I got the glow uh, Sato four stroke 54 and I took the receiver out of the Apprentice which was the first safe select e-flight receiver. It wasn't a 636 it was an e-flight five channel and I figured out a way to put it in the in the SIG four star 54. I had to position the the receiver just right and and then I had to get some reversed uh, servos and, and I was flying it with my uh, DX5E transmitter and I flew it quite a bit until some of the people at the flying field at the park started to um, started to, to let me know that glow powered planes weren't allowed at this park you know some people didn't care some people would let you know some people it really hurt their feelings <laughs> so anyways I got I got rid of that plane and then I was starting to get better and I think I bought another lipo battery and then this was my second plane and I got it on eBay and I was all you know plane crazy at the time and I probably paid way more than what it cost new <laughs> no telling but it was new and it came in the box and I had a blast putting this thing together and I had it all assembled except for the uh, you know the receiver and in between the wings are these flying wires and they do this cross thing I'll show them to you and it you know it came with the wires obviously and 
these little flags on the end of the wires where the eyelet is. You know, you're looking at the instructions, and this would be number five, and it would go here. And it was it was tough to get them all lined up because every every attachment point around here is a little screw and a little nut. And you'd get the wires, and one would be too short, and, and nope, they had to go this way. And anyways, I finally got all the wires figured out. And my dang cat came in here and, and ruined all the wires. So then I just kind of put this on the back burner because these wires aren't for looks, it's for strength and you have to have them. And I looked on the internet and I finally found a Bitco Hobby and sent him a message and asked him if he had these wires and he said he didn't have them for this but he had them for their other biplane and he felt like they would work. And I kind of, you know, did my own little research and, and I didn't think it would. So anyways, this went on the back burner for quite some time. And then I finally had the idea that I could do the wires out of fishing line and you know little swivels and eyelets that you use for fishing. So that's what I did. And it's all assembled with fishing line and, and it, it works really good and it's tight and everything's how it's supposed to be. And then um, I started getting into the Spectrum programming and about that time the 636's were kind of becoming popular and available to purchase used because Spectrum had recently just allowed people to unlock the ones that came in a bind and fly where we could program them for whatever. So I got a 636 and I ended up putting the PT-17 or 19, like their only other uh, bind and fly biplane they had. And I put that profile in the 636 and then I put that receiver in here. And I flew this about three times and I wasn't very good at it. And I wasn't very good at assembling the planes or, you know, just I was a rookie. And I had the, thro the, the throws off. You know, I, I probably didn't even, didn't even measure it, probably. You know, this guy right here, I probably didn't use it. You know, this is how you can adjust how much travel. You know, if it says max is, you know, 15 degrees or whatever, I probably didn't do that. And the time or two that I flew it, it was up and down and left and right and it, it was bad it was probably the gyro was off and I had the you know the dual rates off and, and and it was bad anyways I landed it and it was in one piece and then tinkering with it here in the shop one of the things that was kind of weak was this was this tail back here this this foam was just not as strong as others and and when the tail wheel would hit the ground it would kind of bend over and stuff so I strengthened it up with some popsicle sticks and I got the got the tail all uh, strengthened up and keep in mind I'm still a rookie and you wouldn't believe what a couple popsicle sticks and some glue how much that would affect the center of gravity a lot the next time I flew it it was worse than what it was before so then I learned about center of gravity you know looking at this plane you know the our, our seesaw, our teeter totter, whatever you want to call it, from the center of gravity back here to the tail, these couple popsicle sticks and a little bit of glue is quite a bit of leverage on the center of gravity. So, anyways, it was a good thing. Then I learned the center of gravity, and I just started getting more, uh, you know, more advanced in this hobby. So after I got the center of gravity figured out and and got the tail and all that strengthened up, I never flew it. I think I got an extra 300 at that time and, and this has just been on the back burner and another reason why I haven't flown it or haven't put any effort into it is because of these wires I need to disassemble my planes to take them to the park or I can only take like one at a time and being that you can't break this one down because of those dang wires it just makes it a pain to, to carry this thing out the door without trying you know without hurting it and and you know getting it in the car without Bit, beating it up so because you can't break it down and that that's a, a huge reason why I haven't flown it and haven't done anything else with it that's that's the main thing and just other planes you know I've, I've had more fun with uh, with the other ones so anyways I'll give you guys a tour of this plane I'll show you guys the wires I started to do my own little modifications I was putting a better motor on it a, a better ESC I think this motor might actually be out of a uh, Maybe the uh, maybe like a Timber X. I think that might might be what it is. So, 
we'll take a little look at it here and then we'll and then I'll say have a good coming week when I was taking this down from its holding spot I saw these little stickers here and, and I've got my own notes it says balance needed <laughs> so the motor I put on here is a uh, Oh, it's an 800 kV, and the part number is EFLM17552. So it's it's one of the Timber X's, I think. And here's one of these little flying wires. Let me give you guys a little, get a little closer here, a little closer. I tell you what, we'll put the cow on it real quick, and then we'll get the new, the new uh, camera out and give you guys a full full walk around with it and show you guys these wires up close and all that stuff so get my little, little stickers here balance needed that's great so that means I knew I wanted to use a, a bad prop the way I had this thing hanging in the uh, in the ceiling like that so we'll just I think we can just leave these we'll leave those wires like so Got to find a couple more screws. No big deal. Well, I hope you, some of you guys got to go fly this weekend. There's that. And let me get a get another screw and put my put my magnifying glasses on here. Let's see if we can find a couple more little tiny tiny screws. There's one right there. If we can find one more, then that'll make three. <clears throat> Excuse me, that'll make three. There it is, and that'll be that'll be good. <clears throat> All righty. Look at this little motor mount real quick before we cover this up. It's not not one of the crosses. Oop. It's just a piece of metal bent in a in kind of a square okay kind of like a little box old Brutus just peeked in on me He's like all right man I gave you an hour you're about 30 minutes into it all right all right I got you so there's one And and two. I think we'll just leave it like that, unless this bottom one lines up real easily. And it did. Wow. All right. All right. So we got the cow on. Put that screwdriver up. Put the box of screws up. We got to put the prop back on because that's how. That's how we got it uh, hanging. This has a collet style prop adapter. So does that when you tighten the nut, it bites down on the motor shaft. You know, I had to, this this was kind of a big deal when I was, you know, a rookie replacing replacing the motor and getting another one that, uh, you know, has spaced out the right amount. It's off a little bit. There's a somewhat of a gap here, but it had a yellow spinner that I don't have anymore. Here's the flying wires with one of the little tags. I happen to have one laying around. All right, let's get the other camera. We'll give it a little 360 before we get the other camera out and do a couple couple close-ups. It's a big plane. Let's measure it real quick. About 50, 50 inches. It 
looks good. All right, we got the Dynamo Tiger Moth. I'll show you guys my popsicle stick uh, deal here. These couple little sticks to strengthen up this rudder made the made the center of gravity bad. Look, look at my little paint job. I tried to make the popsicle stick match the uh, the sticker. It also has wires that are supposed to go here to here, but, uh, and and on the bottom of it too, I believe. No, only on the top. The push rod for the for the rudder here. I did some kind of reinforcement deal here because I think the tube and the rod would just bow out instead of pushing the rudder. So that strengthened it, you know, because the servo's way up in here. And as it pushed the rod, it would just bow out instead of instead of pushing the pushing the rudder. Yeah, I'll show you guys these wires. Here's what the wires started at. You know, the little flag would say number five, you know, goes uh goes right here or what have you. And they're all little screws and, and nuts. <clears throat> Excuse me, it was quite the Quite the job getting all these things, all the wires in there. Then my cat destroyed them. But I did them out of fishing. I had a, had a fishing tackle. And uh, they're fairly tight. And it uh, it works now. Show you guys in here. Oh, this is my first little pilot. Little paint job. I guess he's half done. <clears throat> this is a, uh, a little bed I made for the receiver. And uh, it's only got one servo in there, so I guess I robbed it for something else. It's a fairly big plane. I think it said a 1270, just under 1300 millimeters. Get it spun. A, we'll get them spun around here. This guy needs a coat of... Uh, of uh, polyacrylic for sure. I think I clear coated this one with something in a spray can, like just automotive clear coat paint that you can get from AutoZone or something. I think that's what I did this one with. This suspension is unforgiving. I mean, there's no, no shock and Nothing. These tires are somewhat soft, but the way this the the battery goes up here, the the center of gravity is is weird, and it makes it makes the nose really heavy. Like if it had brakes, it would do an endo really easy. See, everybody that I've seen on YouTube flying it had to be real careful because when you land, it'll nose over really easy. I think I saw somebody else on YouTube that. He shortened these and then bent the landing gear forward a little bit just to kind of change it. We will, uh, we'll fly this thing again. We're, we're not, it's not done. It's just, uh, hanging out in the, in the hangar for right now. See what kind of a no name, no name servo. All right, well, now you know what the yellow cow goes to that's been sitting on the shelf for so long. My head's getting chopped off. All right, guys. Hey, have a good rest of the week. Subscribe if you haven't. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment. And uh, this guy right here. Ring the notification bell so you don't miss my next video. All that really supports what I'm doing here. So, hey, thank you, guys. Have a good week. And until next time, you'll see me here. Adios.